Welcome to my channel. There's a funny thing about this subscribe thing. Now you've seen other videos and everyone is like, well, well if you, you like this channel, subscribe and hit the button below and like and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you to do that. All I'm going to say is that most people don't subscribe. So if you want to tell me why you don't want to subscribe in the comments down below, that'll better help me deliver what you might want to see in the future and then hopefully earn your subscription. So if you can do that, that'll help me a ton. And thank you for clicking on my video anyway. So welcome to this channel. Today we're going to talk about the Canon R5. The fact that it shoots 35 megapixel photos in RAW at 30 frames per second. Before I get started, let me say yes, the R3 is an amazing camera and its full frame sensor that does 24 megapixel photos can do up to 30 frames per second at 24 megapixels. But you're talking about the R5, which is not that sports camera. It's not, in fact, as expensive or considered like almost top tier in Canon's line when it comes to cameras. But I'm telling you that you can absolutely shoot 35 megapixel photos at up to 30 frames per second when you're in a pinch and you need those high frame rates. Now let me get started on exactly how you do that because it's not as simple as just holding the shutter button and taking those photos. You kind of need to understand how video works, understand how you can use the raw video capabilities of the Canon R5 and then of course turn those into photos that you can use for your clients. So first to get started, what am I talking about and what does this mean? And I thought the R5 only did 20 frames per second tops when using the electronic shutter. Well, yes, that is the case. When you're in photo mode, your top fastest ability to shoot raw photos is 20 frames per second. And that's at the full 45 megapixels. But if you're switching over to video mode, you have the ability to record raw video at up to 30 frames per second, 8K. Now what does 8K mean? 8K is another way of telling you how much detail you get out of video. So 8K essentially means that you get around 8,000 pixels across and then a little over 4,000 pixels down. So it's like width and height of your video. However, when translating that into photos, the video is actually cropping a little bit of that full frame sensor because the sensor itself is basically almost a square. It's like three by two. That's considered full frame. But then to get that nice movie aspect ratio, it's got to kind of crop in the top and the bottom so you get a nice wide view. So that wide view cropped is going to give you your 8K video. So what does that mean? Well then, in video, you're not getting the full 45 megapixels. Megapixels is just how many pixels in an image. So you take the length times the height and that's how many pixels you get. Well, in an 8K still frame, you get around 35 megapixels because again, you cropped off the top and the bottom. So 35 megapixels. Now what is raw video? Similar to raw photos, raw video gives you all of that data, basically the sensor data from your camera in video format. So it's one file rather than multiple files for each still frame. It's one file that lets you adjust settings and posts so that you can get the image that you want while also making sure that you capture the maximum amount of like dynamic range and detail in your photo. Basically, it's like fixing your settings in post if you're screwed up or getting the most editing flexibility that you would want when you're color adjusting your photo or video in this case. So how does this apply to photos? And why is the R3 considered so expensive if the R5 can do what it can at 35 megapixels at 30 frames per second versus the R3's 24 megapixels? Well, the R3 has a new backside illuminated sensor that has a very fast readout. So when you're actually taking those photos and it's in its electronic shutter mood, those fast photos will actually not have any kind of like warping that you'd get that has to do with the sensor reading out from top to bottom very fast. Now the R5 isn't as quick when doing this. So I wouldn't recommend this mode when it comes to sports or anything like that, which is why the R3 would be much better at handling quick frames per second during sports events. But for example, if you're a photographer at let's say a wedding and it's that perfect moment where the couple's going to kiss or when they're putting a ring on the finger and you want to time it 
exactly just right. Using this little trick right here will ensure that no matter what happens, you will get the exact frame that you need to deliver a photo that they can use. So let's get started. How do you do this? How do you get the raw editing capability of these fast frames per second? Well, let me show you. First things first, set your camera to raw video, 8K raw video, and you'll have to have a CF Express card that can actually record this raw video. I recommend the larger the better, and of course, look at your Canon R5 manual to make sure that you set it as you need it. So once you have that and you have the ability to record raw, there is an overheating limitation on the camera, but you shouldn't have to worry about that if you're only doing snippets and you're recording just those moments that you really need to get that video. The nice thing about it is when you're recording 30 frames per second in 8K raw to get those raw photos that you want, those 35 megapixel photos, you don't have to worry about hundreds of files coming out and that you have to like cull through all those files. Basically, it'll be one video file that you can of course edit and post. So record what you need and there's like a 180 degree shutter rule when, we're, when you're recording video, which means your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. But in this case, do not worry about it. Worry about your photo settings and your exposure settings. And in fact, crank up that shutter if you have to because that'll eliminate motion blur as it would in any photo. Just get it so that it's gonna look exactly how you want from a photo perspective when you're taking that video. Then of course, take the video of the moments. Five, 10 seconds, a minute, everything that you need for these photos. That's what you need. Moving on from there. Get on your favorite video editing software. You're gonna need video editing software from this because that's what's going to take that file and then give you the initial flexibility that you would want so that you can edit these pictures. Now, on your video file, on your NLE, you can use either Adobe Premiere Pro, you can use DaVinci Resolve, and I haven't tried using this in Final Cut Pro, but you could probably do this too. And in this editing software, you have the ability to edit white balance, edit exposure settings, and in fact, DaVinci Resolve lets you adjust ISO in post as well, specifically, which I don't even think Lightroom lets you do, but in DaVinci Resolve, you can. Now you'll notice that as opposed to using Lightroom, for example, where everything is correctly exposed, but you just have to add the punch. In your editing software, everything's gonna look pretty much flat. And that's because it's capturing the most dynamic range. And from there, you just have to kind of pull it out. So that's kind of different when it comes to photo editing that you would normally do. But when you pull out that additional detail, you could at least start off with initially getting a color look that you would want when you're working in post. Here's where the magic begins. So you've gotten it to look with similar settings that you would normally have in Lightroom, you know, where you could adjust your highlights, your shadows, and all of that additional detail. And you've got it at least a basis where you can really start tweaking it the way you want. Now you can start pulling your still frames. So pick a frame that you want to on your NLE and pull it out. I know of functions in both DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere where you can actually get a still frame. Now that still frame is gonna be a 35 megapixel photo and it's wide, which is traditionally not normally what we do when it comes to taking photos. Again, we're normally three by two. So bring all those photos that you outputted that you want to edit in post and bring them into Lightroom. From there, they'll act like JPEGs when editing Lightroom. Now you've already done the raw color tweaking so you were able to adjust what you needed to. So any additional edits when it comes to the photo, it's at your heart's content because you have 35 megapixels photos to work there. Now, if you wanted to get to that traditional three by two format that normal full frame cameras give you, you can crop that in Lightroom. But then what happens? You lose resolution. Well, if in a three by two format, how big is the crop factor? Well, taking that wide format down to what would traditionally be a photo format, would give you around a 28 megapixel photo. So you still have plenty of resolution, more than you would have on the R3, and you took those photos at 30 frames per second. So regardless of how you look at the crop, whether you use the full width of that resolution, or you just crop in to be traditional photo size, you still have more resolution and detail than you would off of the R3. And you took those photos at 30 frames per second. So that's it. That's how you can get very fast photos that are raw 
from your R5 and actually use them in post. And quite honestly, I will tell you that rather than culling through hundreds of photos, step, 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 I'd rather one file that I could just slide and look for the best moment and work from there. Because in my opinion, it's just faster. Yes, you need a pretty beefy computer, but what if you don't have a beefy computer to work with 8K on your NLE? Well, you also have the option of recording raw with proxy files to an SD card. And then when you sync them in post, it'll be a lot easier to work with the files because you're just looking at the 4K proxy. Turn the proxy setting off when you're actually looking at the photo that you potentially want to output or when you're color correcting. But to actually scrub through the footage, you turn on your proxy. You don't have to add any additional time to it and you'll still be able to get this done even if your computer is not the highest of end of computers. But I do recommend at least 32 to 64 gigabytes of RAM because raw files are very memory heavy. So that's it. That's the piece of advice I wanted to give you. Oh, and, and as one last question, this is the first time I'm actually using this wireless Rode video mic. And it's funny because I'm using it and, and I bought it and the very next day, YouTubers started to say that DJI is where it's at and their recorder is much better than the one here that I'm wearing by Rode. And it's like, I just bought this yesterday and this one, and that one is not coming out until January. So I didn't return this. I figured at least from an audio perspective, they sounded pretty similar from what I could tell by reviewers. So it's fine, <laughs> but that's the way it is. There's always something better. And in this case, the R5 is pretty darn good, even with the R3 coming out. But let me know what your thoughts are. Subscribe if I did earn your subscription. And as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you next time.